as part of our commitment to diversity and inclusion, it's Jock Night here on Poltax TV. Coming up, back-to-back episodes of Rapsi Nesbitsky, Chewing the Fat Bastard, and Steel Game Comrades. But first, it's over to Edinburgh Grad for the McNews. citizens, this is Stalin Land Today, the unbiased and impartial state-sponsored news program of the People's Democratic Republic of Jokistan. I'm your host, Alexei Salmanelovich, tonight's top story. Bastard English-loving BBC journalist abuses patriotic, peace-loving Scots at Tory leadership hustings in Perth. Future Tory bastard English Prime Minister Liz Truss insults the dear leader. <laughs> saying she will ignore the democratic will of the citizens of Stalinland to be free of their bastard English oppressors by not giving us another once-in-a-generation referendum less than ten years after the last one. The latest round of the bastard Tory leadership hustings came to Stalinland this week as Liz Truss and Fishy Sunak held the hustings in Perth. Our state broadcast cameras were not allowed inside the venue but we did capture these images of freedom-loving Scots being abused by the BBC's bastard English-loving Scottish political editor, posh boy Jimmy Cook, the wee wanker. If you Can let I, me finish no, the sentence, no, no, no. I had my phone out actually to get a good shot of everybody and show what everyone was saying when the gentleman called me scum. So, Can I ask the person question? who's been unreasonable Can here? In a statement, Lard Ars McSporin, shop steward of the Westminster branch of the Deep Fried Mars Bar Party, said that he strongly condemns the clear anti-Scottish bias of the BBC and calls for a public inquiry, funded by the bastard English taxpayer, to investigate the deliberate misrepresentation of peaceful democratic Scots protests against the bastard English Tories. Well, I, I'm not... I, nobody said to me that if the, the people who were abusing James Cook were SNP members. <laughs> Uh, if you go on to social media right now, uh, you won't have to look very far to find people professing uh, to be uh, supportive of uh, unionist parties hurling that kind of abuse at me or people on my side of the debate. It's obvious, comrades, to any right-thinking person, which is all of us, that the people hurling insults at James Cook were Tory infiltrators, planted by the bastard English Conservative Central Office to try and make kind, tolerant, peace-loving Scots look bad. State Police Scotland said in a statement that while they are a rights-based organisation that takes the anxiety caused by the bastard English on social media seriously, their commitment to diversity, tolerance and respect for all under the law does not extend to Tory scum who seek to undermine the state by staging fake protests to try and make tolerant Scots look bad. Anyone found guilty by Twitter of misrepresentation will get their windies tanned and a leathering in the back of a police van. Bastard Tory leadership hopeful Liz Truss caused righteous fury amongst peace-loving Scots by claiming that if elected bastard English Prime Minister, she would ignore the dear leader and would reject her democratic mandate for another independence referendum. She also branded the dear leader an attention seeker, which is a bit rich coming from a paisley bird. State Police Scotland said in a statement they were aware of the bastard English Tory leadership contender's comments, saying that, while they are a rights-based organisation, that upholds the right to pro-Scottish free speech for all under Scots law, it does not extend to criticism, either direct or implied, of the dear leader. And finally, the dear leader has set out once again her vision for an independent Scotland and an interdependent world through independence in Europe. She rebutted false and misleading claims by the bastard English media that if Scotland was to rejoin the European Union, it wouldn't be independent, because you have to give up some of your independence to be part of the EU. Independence in an interdependent world. There have been many changes since the referendum in 2014. In many ways, the world is a different place. The UK is certainly a very different place. In fact, I think if we could turn the clock back and people in 2014 could have foreseen the path that the UK would have taken out of the European Union, Boris Johnson as Prime Minister, then Scotland undoubtedly would have voted yes back then. The dear leader refuted claims that 
because the majority of the decisions affecting Scotland would be taken in Brussels and not Edinburghgrad, her independent Scotland wouldn't really be independent. As the deal leader rightly pointed out, an independent Scotland doesn't have to mean all the decisions that affect Scotland have to be taken in Scotland. She dismissed those bastard Tory-backed assertions as yet another example of the arrogant English Tory media doing down brave wee Scotland and confusing real facts with facts. To those who say, well, you know, we've got all of these other challenges right now, we shouldn't be thinking about independence, I think the opposite is true. In closing, comrades, you will vote for an independent Scotland at the next election, because Scotland is a peace-loving, kind, tolerant, inclusive and welcoming nation. And the sooner our proud yet humble nation of Scotland is independent, which means independent of the bastard English, the sooner the state and the dear leader will be able to provide you all with the life you deserve, whether you like it or not. Fuck off!